Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you how to secure your MetaMask wallet using a Trezor cryptocurrency hardware wallet for security. So let's get started. So MetaMask is a browser extension that you can use as a cryptocurrency hardware wallet. It's one of the most powerful and versatile wallets out there. It's supported by many DeFi sites. It's supported by NFT marketplaces. It's basically one of the cutting edge wallets in Web3. A lot of people complain about it and say that it's not secure because it stores private keys on your computer and that makes them vulnerable to hackers, conceivably. But if we secure our MetaMask wallet with a hardware device, making sure that the private keys of the wallet are stored on our hardware device, then it makes the MetaMask wallet much more safe and secure. So I'm going to show you how to do that using a Trezor device. All right, so I have my Trezor T here. I'm gonna show you how to get it connected and uh, check its status. We might have to do a little maintenance first. Always a good idea when you're using a hardware wallet for your cryptocurrency storage needs. So let's get going with the Trezor. I'll show you how to get it all hooked up and ready to go. And then I'll show you how to use it to secure your assets in MetaMask. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is connect it to my computer with my USB cable. All right, so I have my Trezor connected to my computer. It's telling me it's not connected. So we'll just tap it and then we'll get the pin interface. We'll get our pin entered and get started. All right, once you've entered the pin, uh, you'll see the device, it's lit up and it's ready to connect. So the first thing I'll do is go over to Trezor Suite. All right, so I'm just gonna launch my Trezor Suite. All right, I have changed the name of one of my accounts, so I have to enable edit labeling when I connect my device. I'll just hit that little uh, check mark there. All right, so this is the home screen of the Trezor Suite. Uh, I'll go over here to accounts, and then you can see the accounts that I have on the device. As you can see, I'm managing Bitcoin, Ethereum, and some Cardano here. You can always add more coins by hitting plus here. And there's uh, several more coins that you can manage within Trezor Suite. Also, if you click on Ethereum, you can manage your ERC20 tokens in the Ethereum account. It's over here under tokens. And as you can see, I have a little bit of BAT token in the wallet at this time. And uh, there's a couple of tokens that I've had in here before that currently have zero balances. All right. So everything's up to date. Uh, if it asks you to update your firmware, you should do that. If it asks you to update the Trezor Suite software, you should do that. Always keep your software and device completely updated. Don't delay on updates. They're very important for security and functionality, right? But really what uh, I'm not going to use Trezor Suite today because we're going to be setting up a MetaMask wallet and we're going to use the device as our uh, private key. So I can close this out and we'll go back over here to MetaMask. Now I already have MetaMask set up in my browser, right? I can hit both, I can hit these uh, three dots here and expand view so that we can kind of keep an eye on it in one of our browser tabs, a little easier to see everything. Now I'm at the default screen. When you first set up MetaMask, it's going to ask you to write down a 12 word recovery phrase and store it in a safe place. And once you've done that, it's going to take you to the uh, default account interface, got account one here and a zero Ethereum balance. All MetaMask wallets are Ethereum virtual machine based. You can switch between different Ethereum-based networks. The default is the Ethereum mainnet. I'll show you a little bit about switching between networks in a minute, but I want to focus more on getting your Trezor connected. Now, let's take a look at this account that I have over here. If you'll notice, I have some coins in this account. Uh, I've got some Ethereum and I've got some ERC-20 tokens. So a lot of people ask me, can I enable 
Ledger or Trezor support for an existing account? And the answer is no. Once you have an account set up and you have coins in it, if it's a standalone account, there's no way to add support to an existing account using your hardware device. What you're going to have to do is create a brand new account based on your hardware. And then if you want to use that account to manage your assets, you'll need to transfer your assets into that new account. So I'll do a little demo on how that works. All right, so uh, we have our Trezor connected. The pin is entered and we're ready to enable support for a Trezor based account. So uh, we'll start here at the uh, account icon. We'll just click there and we're just gonna choose connect hardware wallet. So we'll choose that. And then today we're choosing a Trezor. We'll click on Trezor and then we'll choose continue. All right, now it's going to ask us to allow access to your device. This is not private information. This is only the public keys of the wallet. The private keys will always remain on your device. It, the private keys are used for signing transactions, approving or uh, rejecting transactions. So we'll go ahead and allow that. We're going to export the Ethereum public key, not the private key, the public key. So we'll click on export. All right. Now, uh, it skipped the connection window in my browser. You may see that. You may see a browser pop-up window that will uh, show you that you have a Trezor device. You just need to click on Trezor and click connect in your browser. I've already done that, so it took me straight to the select account interface. Notice here that uh, the first account has a balance of Ethereum in it. That was the one I showed you over in my Trezor suite, right? So we can use that account if we want to, or we can create empty Trezor accounts. It's all up to you. If you have a lot of crypto stored on those accounts and you'd like to keep those as storage only, you can start a brand new account based on a different address by clicking here. So let's go ahead and click both of these and click unlock. Now, notice we're pretty much at the same place we were before, where we have a zero Ethereum balance, and it says Trezor 2. That's because I, I uh, connected both of them. Let's go over to the account interface, and you'll see that Trezor 1 is the one with the balance, right? So we can click on Trezor 1, and there you can see that balance. All right. You can also see that BAT balance that I had over in the Trezor Suite. All right. So you can see over in Trezor Suite that I have an Ethereum account with 0 0.0334 Ethereum. And then over in MetaMask, we've got the same account accessed through this wallet interface. Right. Exact same wallet on the device, exact same private key but we're taking advantage of the power and flexibility of MetaMask to manage the balance, right? So you might ask, well, why would we want to do this? Well, we may want to do DeFi, right? We might want to use uh, Uniswap if we wanted to swap tokens, right? So uh, if we want to use Uniswap and uh, with this particular wallet, we'll hit Connect Wallet. We'll choose MetaMask, and then we'll make sure that we're using that uh, Trezor account, right? We'll click Next, and then Connect. And then notice now that uh, Uniswap is showing my Ethereum balance, right? So I can use this to swap for tokens. If I wanted to buy some one-inch token on Uniswap, I could do that. I could use some of my Ethereum, and I'll just use some of it. All right, so if I wanted to make a small swap on Uniswap, uh, let's take a look at how that would work. We'll hit Swap, Confirm. We'll have to authorize this in MetaMask, and then we'll Confirm. But notice, after I hit Confirm, the Trezor interface comes up. 
It wants me to allow access to the Trezor device, which I will do. And now you'll see that I have to confirm these swaps on my device, right? Now, notice there that I had quite a high gas fee and probably not enough to get this transaction to go through, but uh, you get the idea, right? Anything that has to be executed within MetaMask also has to be authorized by your device. Now, I can go ahead and, uh, right, at any point during, that was a pretty high fee, so at any point during this process, I can reject this transaction and say, uh-uh, I decided that, I've decided that I don't want to execute the transaction now. So as you can see, everything relies on the, the device, right? Right. Nothing can occur without the device authorizing. That's the beauty and security of the Trezor device. All right. Now, I mentioned earlier that I'm going to show you how to transfer some assets in to the device so uh, or the account protected by the device, more precisely. All we need is the address of the wallet. We can get that up here by just clicking and it copies it into our clipboard. Now let's move over to that other account that I showed you earlier that is not protected by a Trezor device. From this account, I can move some of the ERC20 tokens over here into my new Trezor-based account. All right, so there's a little bit of Polka Bridge tokens in there. I'll send them by clicking send here, and I'll paste in the address of my uh, Trezor-based wallet. I'll go ahead and uh, send the max and click next. All right, the gas fees are a little high right now, but I'll go ahead and pay those. We'll hit confirm here. Now notice I didn't have to authorize anything on the Trezor on that operation because I'm sending out from a different wallet to my Trezor. You don't need any authorization for incoming crypto, right? People can send me crypto all day long and I don't need to authorize it on my device. All right now, uh, we've sent that uh, token. Let's switch back over to our Trezor-based account. Take a look at what we got over here. There's that uh, transaction that we uh, rejected, right? But if we go to assets, you can see that now I have that Poker Bridge token in my Trezor-based wallet, right? So that's what you would need to do. You would need to fund the wallet with uh, assets that you already have in unprotected wallets, right? So once again, we cannot add support for a Trezor hardware device to an existing account, right? There's no way to add hardware support to an existing account. You need to create a brand new account based on your hardware and then transfer assets into that account. And then once you've done that, you can uh, trade from within this account, right? Now, uh, I'll also show you an outgoing transaction so that you can see how uh, the Trezor authorizes outgoing transactions. Let's go ahead and switch back over to that other account. I'll go ahead and grab the address by just clicking here. We'll switch back over to our Trezor account. And I'm gonna send this BAT over to the other wallet. Um, Normally I wouldn't do this. I'm sending, uh, I'm just doing a test for you guys so that you can see how outgoing transactions work. All right, I'll paste in the address there. I'll choose max. It's just a small amount of BAT. We'll hit next. All right, I'm gonna pay a small gas fee for this transfer. We'll hit confirm here. We'll allow this. This is the uh, Trezor interface. Now it's asking me to confirm on the device, right? There's the amount and the address I'm sending it to. I'll tap on that little green check mark. I'm approving the gas fees. Let's tap one more time. Now on this last step, I need to hold down the button to confirm. All right, we'll just hold the button down until that round ring finishes. <laughs> and now we've sent out our uh, BAT. So notice the safety and security of a Trezor-based MetaMask account. All right, and that went out, it's ready to go. Let's go over to the other wallet and confirm that it re was received. 
you can see there that the BAT tokens arrived in my standalone wallet, right? Now I'd like to show you that you can manage your Trezor wallet on multiple networks, right? So if we uh, switch over to the Phantom network, you'll notice that uh, on the Phantom network, I have a zero balance of Phantom. Let's put a little Phantom in this wallet. We'll grab this address. We'll go over to the uh, Crypto Dad. And notice there's some Phantom in this wallet, right? It only shows up on the Phantom network because I'm on the Phantom Opera network in MetaMask. So let's go ahead and send this. So notice that I'm sending to my Trezor wallet from uh, this existing standalone wallet, and we're using the Phantom Network. We'll hit Next. All right, there's going to be a small fee in Phantom. We'll hit Confirm. That one was successful. Uh, let's go ahead and switch back over to our Trezor-based account. And you can see there's three Phantom tokens in there. Notice they only show up when, we're in, uh, when we've selected the Phantom Network. If we go over to Ethereum, we don't see those anymore, right? This is a uh, Ethereum-based wallet. And then uh, if we switch networks, we can manage assets on other chains. You can do all this in your Trezor-based wallet, right? So we could go, say, over to SpookySwap, all right? And I'll go over here to my MetaMask, I'll, MetaMask wallet and connect to my Trezor wallet to that three FTM. And notice that the balance of FTM is now showing up in SpookySwap. So you can take advantage of multiple uh, DeFi sites like Uniswap and SushiSwap over on the Ethereum network. And you can use other networks like Phantom and trade on uh, DeFi platforms like SpookySwap using your Trezor-based account, right? And basically I'm just scratching the surface here if we go over to MetaMask, you can see that there are so many different networks that uh, we can use from within MetaMask. Moonbeam, Moon River, Polygon, uh, Avalanche C Chain, Binance Smart Chain. So we have so many options open to us, so many DeFi sites open to us. Uh, we've got NFT sites, which I didn't even really demo for you guys. So there's a whole host of options open for you using MetaMask, and you'll want to make sure that your MetaMask is secured with a wonderful hardware device like the Trezor. If you have any questions about anything I did, please throw them up in the comments, and I'll do my best to get them answered. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me, and hope to see you again soon.